there you're watching the sunrise again. <coughs> A new day has begun. And already somebody for the last half hour is having fun out there with a jet ski. It's amazing the passion there is for hobbies and sports and entertainment and distraction. And that's a, quite a distance away. I just noticed that I, th I see a lot of tents over there so we won't bother those good people. They're Orthodox Jewish families on vacation, lots of them. And they're sensitive to their privacy. So we'll respect that. Before the new year, the, the Jewish new year, they have this time of vacation from their yeshiva, from their, their schools of, of Jewish learning. And they're out camping in nature, enjoying the very simple things of life. Family together, outdoors, little games, the water. People who stay out of the, the mainstream economic pressure and stress on the one side, which is the object of a lot of critique by folks who his only meaning in life is push and shove and work and and so it's, there are different ways of seeing it you know some people consider them not carrying the burden of society and there are obviously many issues and it's above my pay grade to discuss and resolve all of these but <clears throat> I find it an interesting also in a way like a critique of society uh, an alternative path, if you will, that surely has its own merits as well. And its own limitations and pitfalls and shortcomings, no question about that. Like every way of life, every choice we make, we gain some things and we sacrifice other things in the process. And therefore discernment is very important. How to live, how to prepare the future for children, what emphasis to provide, and also letting the mystery unfold of each person as each day unfolds in our lives and each year in our entire life. And we have a, a line today from Psalm 95 or 96. 96, uh, the Lord comes to judge the earth. It's the, the uh, part of the last verse of the portion of the psalm we have today. The Lord comes to judge the earth. So we live in a relationship, a relationship with our creator, with our redeemer, a relationship of authentic dependence, which is not meant to hold us down, but to enable us to rise. And so like an astronaut in space doesn't want to lose contact with the with the spacecraft as he walks out in space, he needs to be well secured. I just read a little bit of a testimony. Actually, it was a guy who spoke at the Eucharistic Congress in Indianapolis about that experience of walking out from the, the space station and obviously having a strong sort, a strong source of, of connection to the station so you don't just keep going out in space and leave your station behind. Uh, a lot of planning, a lot of thinking, a lot of provision to guarantee that. 
and that being tied to the space station is not a limitation sure it limits he can't go out for miles and miles he has to stay within range uh, he has to stay connected and that's the possibility of his life and his continuity sometimes we see our dependence on god as a negative as curtailing but it's actually enabling us to live it gives us that possibility to be to be just to be to be and as much as we wouldn't like to have to be judged but being free people we have there are consequences for our behavior our choices so the lord comes to judge the earth and that applies to everybody nobody everybody has some little responsibility even some of those who have very limited knowledge capacities or or decision-making capacities because of certain limitations um, we have the down syndrome people we have people who lose the cognitive abilities or who haven't developed them very much for all kinds of different reasons many many challenging reasons the lord comes to judge the earth and he comes with mercy he comes with goodness but he comes to judge and there has to be some substance in that so that's also a little bit the backdrop of of the reading and in that sense the word that we receive today in the letter to the thessalonians is a letter a word of calm don't be shaken out of your mind suddenly by something people say by some event or something that seems to be supernatural you have all these slipped out of the the phone slipped out of the gimbal so i think we're going to give you a little somersault to get you back in unless we cut off the video but if you can bear the somersault if you're still there i think some of you are then i uh, hope you didn't get too scared <laughs> speaking about being scared uh, hope i get this right with a little bit of trial and error here seeing some of the sunrise instead of seeing the ground in the process hang in there people now it's going to do a little somersault as we get it into the gravity position okay hold on i think we're good now you're still there so that was kind of good timing in a way where are we here let no one deceive you in any way or shock you alleging stuff that even Paul said and we have all this scare stuff out there and so many people <laughs> uh, end of time stuff and strange phenomena stuff and conspiracy stuff keep your wits stay calm even when the phone falls off the gimbal. <coughs> Stay calm. You've been called to possess the glory. Wow. I'm going to cut the phrase at that point. Those of you who want to check it out, check it out a little bit more. You've been called to possess the glory. Some person once told me that, that um, God doesn't give his glory to another. But there are a lot of other lines where God wants to give us glory. It's amazing to participate in his glory, to be raised in glory. In the letter to the Philippians is filled with this. It's it's interesting. 
this is our calling. And this is why God created us, <laughs> to live forever in his glory. Amazing. Amazing. God, our Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting encouragement and good hope through his grace, may he encourage your hearts and strengthen them in every good deed and word. So in a time when some of those early followers were expecting the end of the world right away, hear just a solid word of calm down, keep your wits about you, don't, uh, don't lose your equilibrium. from my, sh my sandal. I was looking for a spot to get into the water, but it's not here. It's all a bit muddy here. If go over further, it's a little more solid. And then you should be praying for all of us who are pastors and preachers and teachers and, and even parents, all the responsibility for others because they're are strong words again in the gospel in that sense about the responsibility of keeping equilibrium and life and balance. And here's a family with children out at sunrise. Isn't that beautiful? Maybe one of the children couldn't go to sleep and mom brings them out here for sunrise. Great idea, mom. So this is a better place. This is a little bit stony here. So I can get this stuff out of my sandals. But this text is also, some people see this text of the critique Jesus has for the, for the Pharisees as like being anti-Pharisee, but it's really a teaching, uh, put things back in perspective teaching. Okay, it's nice to focus on so many little details, but get the big stuff right. Mercy. The words are very strong, blind guides. Focusing on the... on the... Um, on the dill and the common. But the big ones are important. Mercy. Kindness. Don't neglect the weightier things. Sometimes there are squibbles and squabbles and conflicts in families and in the church at large, in society and politics about certain things. And bigger things are overlooked, weightier things for the life of the weak and the, the broken. Sometimes we get distracted with the little things that kind of make us feel busy and doing good, and no doubt it is, but maybe we're neglecting the more important duty that's calling, and it's our responsibility. There's another discernment task to, to be handled. And sometimes it's easier for us to duck it and to get out of it and not, not get the job done that's really incumbent upon us. And that's a work of love to help people to put in priorities and and put what's more important in the top of the list. Not to procrastinate. It's 
see there's a very nice line there that says, do these things and take care of the other ones. And that's a line of kindness, a line of goodness. Cleanse first the inside of the cup, and then the outside can be clean also. Do the important priorities first. People, God bless you. See you later. Keep praying for all people in decision making, especially in all the areas of conflict of the world today. That this world God gave us to live together as family, as human family. Mom here with her children. And all the human people, all peoples of the earth have the aspiration to live like this in peace and kindness and together. God bless you. See you later, alligators.